Burke. Hey Burke. Hey Burke. Hey Burke. Hey Burke. Hey Burke. Give me a call if you need a winger next season. <laughs> So, Berkey, as we talked about last time, you and Kevin Lowe weren't exactly on the best of all possible terms after the Dustin Penner offer sheet. No, I, Kevin and I are friends, and we've mended that fence since then, too. But uh, he'd gone on my fishing trip up to Langara Lodge. Like, we were friends, but I was really sour about this, and I was stewing about it. And apparently I did one too many interviews to suit him. Berkey, how do situations like this, between managers, specifically a pair of managers who used to play and weren't shy when they played. How did these things get handled? Well, to me, he was doing an interview and someone said, what about Brian Burke? He said, I'm so sick of Brian Burke. Anytime, anywhere. Where do I begin? (laughs) He's a moron, first of all. Secondly, he really believes that, you know, any news for the NHL is good news. Secondly, or thirdly, rather, he loves the limelight. And I don't think anyone in hockey will dispute that. Lastly, he's in a pathetic hockey market where they can't get on any page of the newspaper, let alone the front page of the sports. So any of this stuff carries on. I guess he's achieving what he wants because he gets his name in the headlines. But the reality is I hate the fact that my name is linked to his because he's an underachieving, you know, wannabe in terms of success in the NHL. You know, won a Stanley Cup, great. I won six Stanley Cups. You want to count rings? I mean, who cares? But, I mean, it's like the Wizard of Oz, you know, pull the curtains away and there's not much substance. So someone called me right away. So I called Glenn Sather. I went outside in my backyard in Newport Beach because the cell phone reception's better, and I said, your buddy just challenged me to a fight. That's not how you challenge someone to a fight. I'm going to show you how you challenge someone to a fight. <laughs> I said, I'm going to be in Lake Placid on August 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. I'm staying at the Holiday Inn. The USA Hockey's had a tournament up there. Tell him to get his butt up there. I'll rent a barn. I'll kick the crap out of him. I'll drive him to the hospital, and we'll get this all put behind us. What did Glenn Sather say to that? He tried. He's talking me out of it. I said, no, you make the call. I said, this is serious. So now, two minutes later... My ex-wife is standing at the kitchen sink. I thought she went upstairs. She heard the whole thing. She said, have you lost your mind? (laughs) So I don't know if Slats called Bettman or if my ex called Bettman, but someone called Bettman because the phone rang like two minutes later. He said, I hear there's rumblings of some fight in Lake Placid. And I said, yeah, this guy challenged me to fight. Now he's going to have to fight me. He said, you're not fighting anybody. He said, I'll suspend you both for longer than your contracts. So that was the end of the fight. So we never fought. I know part of you wanted it to happen, but I'm sure neither of you would have expected that it would actually have happened, right? I would have bet you $1,000 that day that we were going to fight in Lake Placid. 1000 bucks. I would have bet you 10000 So how did that situation play itself out? Like, how did eventually did you resolve this with Kevin Lowe? Well, I was ripping Kevin Lowe on a phone call. And Brendan, my late son Brendan, heard me ripping him. He said, didn't you used to be friends? And he said, I don't approve. I said, Brendan, we're Irish. I expect you to carry on my grudges after I'm gone. And he said, I don't approve. So after Brendan passed away, I called Steve Tamley. He said, tell Kevin we got a fence to mend, and we did. 